Hello everyone and thank you for attending this talk. I'm Dudek Sebastian and today I will talk to you about Air of Shadow Games, the art of catching Air of Spy Bugs. You can find me on Twitter using the name Fluxus. I'm a researcher at the Trend Micro Company and I've also founded my company named Pentets, I specialize in radio communication and hardware. Today I will talk to you about Air of Spy Bugs. Uh, Air of Spy Bugs um, are a real threat today because actually you don't know, for example, here if like um, a simple cable like that could be legit or not, and also if like a box like that is spying on you or not, or uh, this dongle, uh, if you can trust uh, this kind of dongle or not. So uh, this is like um, something that I wanted to talk uh, to you uh, about how to identify such um, um, uh, such um, I mean such uh, devices or such um, uh, cables that can communicate over the air. Uh, what can you? Know, what we can do? with uh, some uh, software definite radio, etc. So the agenda for today is uh, to just uh, give you like a very quick introduction to wireless uh, communications, um, uh, present you some spike box imp uh, implants um, using the wireless communications, ways to trap also some RF spy bugs, and also uh, talk to you about uh, some inspected uh, devices. Radio frequency, so uh, Radio frequency have a lot of history, and today uh, you know them um, um, because uh, I mean thanks to uh, the DSP because uh, now we know uh, we are using a lot of uh, a lot of uh, mobile phones, wireless tele uh, television, satellites, etc. So um, you know, Earth it's present everywhere, and thanks to DSP we use that a lot to communicate, etc. But it's also a good candidate for Earth spy bugs. Uh, because actually, um, when you want, for example, a bug or an implant to, uh, to communicate uh, over the air, uh, it's like uh, much better than just using like a simple wire that can be uh, just spotted uh, very easily. And the problem for, uh, for us is that uh, there is like no visible wire, so uh, we'll have at some point try to interface with uh, some sort of uh, signal that is sent over the air. Like for example, here's like a, a linear polyset uh, sinusoidal um, uh, electromagnetic wave that we can interface with with the right antenna, for example. And uh, what is important is uh, also to notice that we have to, at some point to you know the frequency that is used by this signal in order to uh, to capture the communication, try to do, to see the signal, or to interface with this communication. And uh, the first thing that you have uh, to, to, uh, to use when uh, you want to scan or you want to see what is in the air is like a spectrum analyzer. You can find some spectrum analyzer like the Rodel Short one that you can see here that it's pretty expensive. Or there are also other like the RF Explorer that I will also hear uh, that uh, here is scanning on the Wi Fi frequency just uh, uh, right now. And that costs like 100 euro or 300 euro. Uh, it supports uh, some frequency, but the resolution is like you know not very good compared to the Reddit Schwartz, but it's okay you know uh, if you want it's like a, a very cool gadget to have if you want to just put some some frequency that um, that are around. But you have also other ways like using um, SDR uh, with jQuerx, um, HSDR, or you have like SDR SDR chat, which is like um, um, a software that is um, uh, um, very well maintained as well as jQuerx. Um, and that using a software definite radio, uh, software definite radio device. Um, and um, we have to know that uh, before software definite radio, it was really difficult to have like um, to, to have an idea of what was going in the air, so, because you had like to uh, maybe make your own, uh, I mean, uh, your own equipment to uh, to scan to a specific frequency, or get like a very uh, expensive equipment that is able to tune to several frequencies. Uh, and today. It's really accessible, and uh, what uh, the, the SDR um, uh, gives you is just, uh, for example, the SDR allows you to tune to several frequency, and uh, what it will do is that it will uh, do the conversion to analogic, to digital, and to the RF amplification, etc., and provide you only some samples that you can work with, like uh, you can uh, modulate, you can uh, encode, you can decode, etc. You can process the samples that. Uh, the, um, the, I mean, the software-definite uh, radio device gives you. And 
there are like uh, more than 100 Azure devices. Um, uh, if you look at, um, uh, for example, at Wikipedia page, uh, if you look at the SDR devices in Wikipedia, you will see like plenty of devices. But uh, there are also cheap uh, SDR devices. So if you don't know anything about uh, SDR, you can always buy one for 15 euro, like uh, this one. And this one is pretty uh, cool because it's really cool, for example, to begin with uh, a such uh, a cheap SDR device. So now uh, let's talk about in notifying a REST by a box implant. So if we look, for example, um, at, um, uh, at our cable, they look uh, pretty legit, uh, but uh, uh, you have to know that uh, once we, uh, we plug them, for example, if we plug uh, this, um, this implant, which, which is like um, the, the witch injector, you can, for example, see that at some point you will see a spike that will be um, higher than the other one uh, you have scanned before. So at some, you know, at some point, you have to start with, um, I mean, here we can just uh, unplug it, but at some point you have to start uh, fresh with, um, I mean, uh, with nothing plugged, and then plug the device, and wait a little a bit, and then you will see maybe like a spike that is higher than the other frequency. But the, the problem with that is that at some point, we are also trying to uh, scan the 2.4 GHz frequency, which are really noisy because they are Wi-Fi, a lot of Wi-Fi network, etc. You have also Bluetooth devices, etc. So it's like uh, really noisy. But there are also plenty of ways because um, as you can see here, uh, we can, for example, just plug the cable here. Um, as it used probably the ICM bands, uh, we can try to scan for some uh, Bluetooth devices first, or Wi-Fi devices uh, using, for example, aircraft. I mean, uh, Airmon, etc. But here uh, it's uh, Bluetooth, so we will see that maybe here we can see like a device showing here called Ninja, and if we unplug the device, we can see that uh, this device will just um, uh, go away. So that means that at some points. Uh, uh, the, the cable is not legit. But yeah, uh, this is, it is like really difficult because at some points, um, these devices also use the 2.4 gigahertz. So at some point, you will have to use uh, um, a Faraday cage in order to uh, be sure that uh, uh, the device is communicating or not. Because if it doesn't use, for example, the Wi Fi or uh, the Bluetooth protocol, at some point, you will have to do some guessing. And so you will have to use the, um, a basic RF Explorer you will see that there will be some communication, but you will be not sure about that. So uh, at some point, you will have also to isolate the signal, and so using a Faraday cage. Um, so to identify the, the reference pipe, there is like a, the hard way. So you have to, you can tear down the, um, the device or tear down the cable in order to be sure. So this is like maybe uh, one of the most practical way to do that, but you can also do that using RF as I just showed, by scanning the frequency, identifying an interesting signal, then do some further analysis on it. And when it comes to analyze the signal, uh, you can, for example, determine the frequency. Uh, by determining the frequency, you can maybe classify the signal, uh, say that maybe it's like, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, LoRa, or uh, something as such, by just looking at the waterfall, I mean, the shape of the frequency, uh, the modulation, etc., And then, uh, you can go deeper. Uh, and then you can also use some blocks to, uh, to process the signal, for example, using new radio uh, with SDR, for example. And you will have then to decode also this uh, information using maybe NRZ, uh, which is very basic, or Manchester, or PEC, or any other uh, encoders, etc. So there's like a lot of things to do, but um, if uh, there's like a, any uh, shortcut you can take, for example, you can say that, okay, uh, this is using Bluetooth, or this is using Wi-Fi, you will directly go to this solution in order to uh, interact with it, dump the, the communication, etc., uh, decode it, etc. There are also useful tools when it comes to reversing some signal, like URH. So here, for example, I was sending a signal with uh, uh, a magic word, uh, a magic word here, uh, with a small, very poor preamble at the beginning, and this signal, uh, I, I can, for example, um, reverse with uh, the URH tool. Uh, if I download, for example, if I'm lazy, I can use uh, this tool and I will not have, for example, to use uh, the radio companion to uh, 
to process this thing. So this is also a good way, for example, using simple uh, digital coming, uh, simple digital uh, signal like ASK, PSK, or FSK. Uh, use URH is like you know very helpful, and you can also decode all the bits uh, and uh, classify them very easily. So uh, it's really practical using the analysis tab. But beyond all of that, we can also um, uh, trap the devices, um, uh, and then we can analyze them. So uh, if, for example, uh, we take the uh, the example of the micro spy bugs, at some point the micro spy bugs use the mobile network. And so you can maybe try uh, try to trap them in order to, uh, I mean, to attract them to a fake base station in order to see if there is like a, some malicious things around or not. Uh, but the problem is that uh, with uh, this technique is that uh, you will probably also attract the other devices, so the other UE. But if you uh, ask for some people to just like you know um, throw away their phones, I mean you know. Uh, not bring the phone in a meeting room, maybe at some point you will maybe have more chance to trap this kind of devices um, in a meeting room. Uh, and uh, to trap the device, you can uh, use exactly the same things I was presenting uh, in a lot of uh, conference about um, how to trap, for example, intercoms, etc. Uh, so this is exactly the same things. You use the end of a concept in order to uh, be the strongest uh, BTS in order to trap the device uh, in your uh, station. And this is the following. So, for example, here I was using like a blade RF, and here was the box um, uh, in the in the right. Uh, that was like a, it's like just a simple G, uh, G, um, GPRS uh, tracker. Uh, and so, by just using the appropriate uh, MCC MNC, that means that uh, I'm using the uh, the exact PLMN code that is used by the SIM card of uh, this uh, device. So I can, for example, try to brute force this MCC MNC in order to find the, uh, the good one. So I will just uh, like postpone, I mean postpone, I will just um, broadcast uh, MCC MNC uh, for each operator and wait until something uh, just uh, uh, got uh, get registered uh, to my device, I mean to my uh, base station. I also uh, send a very strong GSM signal, so actually, I'm the strongest. I'm the strongest. Um, I'm supposed to be the strongest uh, uh, BTS. Um, so normally the device here is supposed to uh, connect to me. But uh, yeah, in a specific situation when you don't know where the device is, at some point you will allow also to use, for example, an amplifier for that. And then you can capture the communication in GPA, GSM or GPS. But what if the bug uses like 2G or 4G? If the, the bug uses 2G or 4G, there's also a way, because yeah, we know that uh, there's like some mutual notification with uh, 2G or 4G, so we can maybe try to downgrade the, uh, the communication uh, to GSM by using some uh, jamming. So we can use, for example, the jammer like that, or jammer like that, or we can also use like a jammer using SDR, which is like a very easy to, uh, to use. Uh, I have also, um, Really, some tools that allows you, for example, to map a lot of uh, GSM base station and then jump them in order to, for example, downgrade the communication of one specific device to uh, your BTS. Um, but if the uh, here in the particular case, or uh, when the device, uh, for example, uh, use only 4G, at some point you can also uh, try to uh, catch only the MSI. Uh, for example, here I'm using like the uh, SRSLT uh, program, and so using uh, SRSLT uh, and uh, using exactly the uh, the right uh, MCC MNC, I'm able to trap one specific device in my base station, uh, and this device uh, just you know uh, just dropped me the MSI, but it didn't you know uh, it didn't complete the registration because at some point. Uh, I don't have the um, the shared uh, uh, secret key of the uh, the SIM cards in order to register this uh, this uh, phone, but it doesn't matter because what I wanted to to know is uh, the uh, uh, this is the presence of any specific device around, and so like that I can maybe locate uh, any specific device which is around, for example, using um, my uh, my uh, I mean a device like that. So sorry, like that. And I can maybe try to scope 
any device around with, uh, for example, MyBlade DRF and see if something, you know, get attached or not. Uh, so, yeah, this is not like an easy thing to do, but uh, using SDR, uh, it is like something that um, it's possible. Uh, you can, for example, try to use, for example, uh, a BTS uh, that will be put uh, in the location and will try uh, to um, broadcast uh, its information in order to trap as much uh, devices on it. And then you will, um, you will try to see what is going on. And in 4G, you can also do the same, but uh, you will just try to, um, to catch the MSI and see if uh, there's like an MSI that you don't know uh, around. There are also unsuspected devices. And unsuspected devices um, are also, I mean, more difficult to predict because uh, actually a lot of people use, for example, uh, wireless keyboard, wireless mouse, etc. And this is a mess. And you can find a lot of uh, devices that can be vulnerable to keystroke injection, like um, the mouse, the keyboard, the presenters, and so on. And the cause of that uh, is that there's like sometimes no confidentiality when uh, uh, you send strokes. For example, when you send a strokes, a button, or, or anything, uh, you will see like uh, the stroke that will be sent uh, in clear text or encoded um, in a way that you can uh, use the same code and replay the same code. Uh, you can also uh, replay the same code if, for example, uh, there, there are some devices that uh, 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 protect the keystroke uh, by just uh, uh, enciphering the, uh, the keystroke, but uh, uh, there is no, uh, I mean, there is no IV uh, on the keystroke, so you can replay the same keystroke again and again. Uh, or sometimes the pairing key uh, is sent in clear, so you can just sniff it and then uh, use it, for example, to uh, encrypt the, the keystroke, etc. And there are like uh, plenty of publication about this. Uh, like you have like a lot of tools like Mautjack, Logic Hacker. Uh, there are also uh, very good uh, publication uh, by uh, uh, Matthias Dick and uh, Gerald uh, Klosterner uh, that talk about um, mouses and keyboards, how they reverse uh, the keyboards and mouses. So it's pretty interesting. And here is like you know uh, an example of using uh, the Logitech tool when I was, um, for example, using um, a dongle plugged in the GPD uh, uh, device, and at the right I was just sniffing on the keystrokes and then injecting uh, the keystrokes also myself uh, after sniffing the pairing and then using the uh, the, the paired key I was able to inject the keystrokes uh, and also uh, sniff on the on the keystroke that, that were typed by the by the key. So the conclusion is that uh, wireless uh, error spy bugs are difficult to, to track, but still it's possible. You can do that with uh, SDR or any other mean like that. Um, but at some point, you will have to be very strict uh, on mapping all the RF device uh, to see if uh, one RF device or one RF communication is monetary, uh, I mean, is uh, legit or not. Uh, so it's really difficult, but it's like uh, maybe at some point um, it's um, it, um, uh, you need uh, to uh, maybe uh, have some places that are uh, well isolated from other devices because actually it's like you know as you as you have seen already with that it's a mess to just like you know stiff to some specific uh, communication uh, especially when uh, these devices uh, and most of the these devices use the ISM bands for that and uh, I think that I think that could be like uh, very interesting to to work on is like uh, do some further work on identifying the signal using uh, some ML. I mean machine learning. So thank you for your attention. Uh, and if you have any question, please ask. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you again. So yeah, I'm open to all your questions now. Thank you, Sebastian. It was really a great mm -hmm. presentation. So we have one question from the Zoom. Uh, so to your knowledge, nowadays uh, is a lot of blue teams. Uh, so sorry, do a lot of blue teams have some skills with those kind of malicious devices? Um, I think that uh, there are some blue teams that have some skills. I mean, um, I have um, already uh, saw a, um, a blue team. I mean, uh, there was like a presentation uh, last year about uh, some implants uh, using, for example, the weed injector, etc. And some of them also just, you know, uh, disassembled some uh, some of uh, the implants and also notified that uh, there was like some chips, etc. So yeah, actually, people. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I think that blue teams are aware of this kind of danger. 
uh, but uh, generally it comes to uh, tearing down all the all the tech cable and you know tearing down all the cables could be a nightmare. So you know I, I could like you know uh, be with you know uh, at my house I, I could be like only with wires like uh, simple wires it's like be a mess. Uh, so I was just exposing how to do that uh, only with radio, uh, you know, having maybe some clue to how to, to test the, the cable without tearing it down. Uh, so, but I think that uh, some blue teams have, you know, already some, some knowledge about uh, maybe tearing down the things in order to see if uh, the, the things is, uh, uh, is malicious or not. And um, about the other things about, for example, this, uh, the spy bugs uh, with um, the microphone, uh, this is something that uh, already detectives are aware of. So uh, generally, if you is a place that uh, uh, that needs, for example, some confidentiality, some people are just hire uh, some some I mean, some people uh, in order to uh, to, for example, do exactly the same thing as I have presented, like uh, trapping, for example, the, the spying device, the spying mic, and then uh, see if there's like um, any spying mic around or any anything spying around using the mobile network. So uh, this is something that maybe uh, is like a, a knowledge that is a little bit split, uh, you know, around you know, all the profession, all, all the profession, because we have like special uh, detective for that. Uh, but uh, uh, inside a company, uh, I don't know. I think that uh, should be. I mean, it should be. Uh, they should have some, but maybe not uh, really specialized in RF. Uh, maybe it's like you know more generalist. So. Okay, so we have another question. Um, so, and thank you for your answer. Um, so, how to ensure a high enough transmission power, and also what kind of hard hardware, and how far can you be from your target? And last question, and is it legal? <laughs> legal. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the. the um... Uh, uh, can you just repeat the question? So yeah, I sorry, can, uh, <laughs> lots of questions. So how to ensure that you have a high enough transmission power and what kind of hardware uh, like do you maybe use or target, I don't know. And how far can you be from your target? So it's uh, for the uh, for the second, I mean, the, when you want to trap a device. Uh, so yeah, how far depends on how, uh, uh, how powerful you also transmit uh, because everything is, uh, is um, is relative to the power of the transmission. So, uh, if you want to trap a device, uh, you have to be um, not too far. I mean, uh, depending on how uh, how much power you also uh, transmit. Uh, and is it legal? Not uh, because actually uh, you cannot transmit uh, uh, without having uh, a license for that. But generally, yeah, the the thing is that uh, you will not, for example, for the 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 answer of uh, your question is. You will not try to transmit too much power in order to not, you know, annoy, uh, for example, the operator. Uh, by example, so you will try to transmit as less as possible, and you will try to scan. Uh, I mean, to scan. Uh, you will try to target maybe just the room uh, and not uh, other rooms around. So, yeah, actually, this is also a battle with also other uh, BTS because uh, sometimes if uh, you have like a cell which is really close to your place, you have to uh, to to fight against it. Uh, so. Uh, this is also better sometimes. So yeah, uh, I mean, it requires a lot of time doing uh, this kind of operation. So uh, generally, it's like you know, not an operation that you can do like in a one-hour shot. I have one question: like, how how much does your equipment cost around? Like... Uh, generally, it's like uh, more than a thousand euro because uh, you know, uh, if you spend like uh, three hundred euro uh, for a generic uh, device, uh, you know, it's it doesn't. Uh, I mean, uh, it doesn't. I mean. It does worth the price, for example, for to begin in RF, etc., to do some generic uh, stuff. But uh, generally, you have to, to have like a uh, for SDR, for example, for this kind of purpose. If you want to uh, emulate a base station, uh, SDR is not a base station. So actually, you have to um, to use, for example, um, a better clock. I mean, a more uh, a more precise clock. For example, you need like also um, a very good SDR, but also a very good um, a computer in order to run all of that. Because actually. Uh, the SDR is you know, pretty good, it's pretty fast, but uh, your computer also has to be very pretty fast. So yeah, it's like also, uh, uh, I mean, you have to do a lot of investment. Uh, well. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so one, I think it's going to be the last question. Uh, is it possible to use a femtocell cell to emulate a 3G, 4G base station and spoof a legit network? 
Uh, you cannot spoof a legit um, uh, network because actually if you spoof a uh, legit network, uh, you have to, to get the keys and in 3G and 4G, uh, you need uh, exactly the, uh, to, to have the keys of uh, your, uh, uh, your register, I mean your subscriber, I mean subscriber uh, in, uh, in code because uh, uh, there is like uh, some mutual authentication in 3G and 4G. Unless in, 4, in 3G, if someone has um, a simple SIM card and not a USIM mod card. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, guys. Ciao.